you must know inside in the deepest part of your being that you matter, not just that you matter, but also why. So for me, the foundational base of empowerment, of entrepreneurship, of any kind of engagement, the foundational base of my success, of my well-being, my wholeness, my everything is knowing who I am and where I come from. In my living room right now is a painting that I've owned now for 30 years. You can Google it. It's called To the Highest Bidder. And it's at the center of my house. And it's at the center of my house because it actually is symbolic of the foundation of not the house, but the foundation for my life. The painting is by Harry Roslin, who was a genre painter, painter in the uh, early 20th, late 19th century. And the painting's over six feet tall, and it, it shows a slave woman on the auction block holding her daughter's hand. And I cannot come in the door, my front door, or I cannot leave without passing that painting. I am reminded of where I come from every day of my life, and I am reminded because I never want to forget it. And in my library, I have a framed list of enslaved African-American people, remember I showed you, who were held in bondage on various plantations, listed in the ledgers alongside the cows and the horses and the buggies and the other property. And I pass this list every day. And often I stop in front of it and just speak their names out loud and their ages. Jonas, 11 years old. $500. Sarah, 41 years old, $900. Elizabeth, 57, $800. And I force myself to consider the absurdity and the obscenity of prices being affixed to each one should they be placed up for sale. And I sometimes just pause before them with a prayer, particularly before I have to make a big decision about one of my companies or whether I move forward or whether I stay still. It reminds me, speaking those names out loud, not only of where I've come from, but how far I have to go because of them. And it reminds me that I am never alone. It reminds me of what I've come through to get through. And even when I find myself in settings where I am the only black woman still, that kind of singularity, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. And I gotta tell you, it never has made me uncomfortable. One of my favorite teachers is Gary Zukov, who says that authentic power is when you learn to use your personality to serve the energy of your soul. Mm. So you are the bigger soul that has a personality. When you figure out how to take I have a big personality. It's lovely, it's charming, but it's not me. It's not me. I am here to do my soul's work and I use my personality to serve the soul's work. And if, and everybody has a different talent and the reason we're all so messed up is because you're looking at everybody else's talent and wishing you had some of their talent. All the energy that you spend thinking about, wishing about, being jealous of, envious of anybody else is energy that you're not only putting out, it's going to come back to you negatively, but you're taking that away from you. All your energy should be forced on what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Because Dr. King's message of not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And there is not a job in here that you can do that you don't switch the paradigm to service and not make that job more fulfilling. I don't care what the job is. If you say, I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an artist, I'm a teacher, I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor, I'm a janitor, I'm a, I'm a clerk, I'm a... If you say, if I look at this from, how do I use this in service to something bigger than myself? It no longer becomes a job. It becomes an offering to the world. And that is why you're here. And when you can line up with whatever that is, line up with that. And all you have to do is keep asking the question. And ask the question in purity, not in, when's it going to come? Mm -hmm. The reason why I was number one for 25 years 
is because I figured out early on there is no story anybody has ever heard that somebody else hasn't experienced. Nothing. And I also figured out, probably maybe the first or second year, that all pain is the same. That a mother in Somalia feels the same way as a mother in Seattle when she loses her child. And the common denominator in the human experience is our emotions and our feelings. And the more vulnerable and open you are willing to be with your story, the more actual understanding you create with other people and the more powerful you become. People don't think less of you for sharing your story. They think more of you for having the courage to share it. Well, what took me from maybe to a certainty was actually a show I did with the Ku Klux Klan. And that's why everything, this is what I wanted. To, if, if I leave you with nothing else, it's just know this for sure. There is not one thing that has ever happened to you. Not one experience, not one encounter, not one crisis, not one joyful thing that hasn't happened just to make you better and help you rise. Every single thing you're calling in, whether you know it or not, and when you figure out that you are calling it in, when you actually start meditating or praying or doing or having a spiritual practice, which is the number one thing you need if you want to be successful in the world. You need something that gives back and nourishes you, regardless of what you call that. You need to, you need to fill your cup so that you can be so full, your cup runneth over and you have enough to give to other people. If you don't fill your cup, you end up dried up. You end up tired, exhausted, and don't have enough to give to other people. You end up resentful every time somebody asks you because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. So your number one job, your number one job is to fill your cup and make yourself whole. That's your job. So it went from calling to, I mean, I was happy to just to be on TV. I've been on TV since I was 19. I met my best friend, Gail, uh, in Baltimore. I knew that that wasn't my calling, being a television reporter. I hated it. She loves it. And I knew, I knew she, she loves it. I hated it. I always felt out of alignment with myself. But my father was like, girl, don't give up that job. You making $25,000 a year and you 25? Don't give up that job. So I had those voices, but every day I, I was, I was, I wouldn't say agony. I was trying to find how can I be myself, be real on the air. And I always felt like I was pretending and that I was out of alignment. And then when they got ready to fire me, they were going to fire me, but they didn't want to release me from the contract. So they thought, well, let's just pay her out and we can get her to do this talk show thing. So they literally put me on the talk show to get me out of the way. And the very first day I sat on there interviewing the Carvel ice cream man about his multiple flavors and Benny from All My Children. Remember, Benny used to be on All My Children. Those were my two first guests. And doing dialing for dollars in between, I knew that I had come home to myself. I could not predict that it would turn into what it has, but I knew that I could finally breathe and I was no longer pretending to... Um, restrict my feelings because I'd go out on stories and I would I would empathize with people I'd feel bad for them and that would show up in the work and then I would you know get a little slip from my boss because I had a you know really aggressive bad boss so um, I started to feel then oh this is oh this is the job that I want but I didn't know about calling holding on to what you really intended what is the larger vision for what you're trying to do? Uh, it's what Stephen Covey has often called beginning with the end in mind. Holding the end in mind is what has gotten me through every crisis, either business or uh, philanthropically. You know, uh, for years on my show, people would stop me in the street and they would say, oh, you changed my life, you changed my life. And, and when you hear that a lot, uh, starts to you're like oh really I changed your life so I would I started turning it around to people to say all right tell me how I did that and then for the first few times people were thrown like tell me how I how I did that but to know that you've been able to do something that changed as I said my favorite work for the girls and they love it is the trajectory your life is going this way and somebody comes along and offer makes an offering that can hit the core nerve, central nerve of your, your, your being, your existence, and changes the way you see yourself in the world. That's what I'm looking for. Wherever you are in your life, whatever space 
you hold, whatever your status is, you have the power to give back from where you are and to use your life, because that's what all of our lives are for, to use your life as a force for something that is bigger than yourself. And that the law of nature that says um, what you put out comes back, that when you do that, and it comes from the center of yourself, not just from writing a check or I'm going to do this because it looks good or I'm going to show up in church, or I'm going to tithe or whatever, but you do that from the center of yourself, that that is what true humanity is all about. So I wanted to, to you know, for me, anytime I get anything, and that's just the nature of myself, I do something called Super Soul Sunday, and I was interviewing Carolyn Mace, who wrote a book called Anatomy of Spirit. And what's really exciting for me is that we were able to broadcast that not just on the cable platform, but to also bla blast it around the world. So we simulcast it around the world. So all around the world, people are tweeting in, thousands of people at the same time. And she said something that really hit a nerve. I knew it would hit a nerve with everybody because it hit a nerve with me. She was talking about how most people lead their lives following a course that is not their own and that unless you can find the course that is truly your own, you will remain off course. And she was talking about how, the, uh, how so many women betray themselves and that when you betray yourself in relationships, regardless of what those relationships are, that you are no different than the person who hurt you. Now, that's just a simple little sentence. When you betray yourself, you're no different than the person who hurt you. The reason why I wanted to do that show is so that people would feel and be able to discover a path to better themselves, a way to see themselves differently. And that one little phrase, when you betray yourself, you become no different than the people who hurt you. Open the door for that. So I, in that way, am validated because I'm very clear about what my purpose on earth is. I'm very clear that the work that I do on television is just a way of me manifesting myself as a vessel and a vehicle for the larger energy that I call God.